Hi, I'm here with James from the Tap Room at their Bayshore location. Tap Room has been growing rapidly over the past few years. Let's go find out why. I'm James Webster, this is Owners and Operators. James, thanks for having us here today. Yeah. Appreciate it. Tell me how you came up with the name of Tap Room. Funny story is right now we're actually thinking about tweaking the name. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, our kind of our vision when I opened 11 years ago, I was 27 years old. Uh, was almost looking at it as like my first business like learning experience and everything happened so quick. I mean, it was a conversation to 2 weeks later we were opening. So there wasn't a ton of, you know, thought into it. Yeah. Um, and uh, we knew we wanted to have a, a place that was casual, that had a ton of craft beer. This is 2011 when you know craft beer was kind of just starting. Um, so uh, you know it was a small place, our first spot in Patchogue there, and we were doing a lot of craft beers on tap. So like Tap Room was the name. Can you walk us through what what goes into running a, a restaurant and a bar, and you know from ordering of the food to the prep work, the the serving, the sure you know, yeah the abs cleanup. Abs absolutely. You know a lot of people. Um, who are not in our industry and have come to me over the years and said, hey, I'm thinking about opening a restaurant, can I sit down and ask you, you know, a couple questions and they're like, you know, why do you think you've been successful? Like, what's that golden nugget? And I'm like, well, there's literally hundreds of little, it's all about the little things, it's hundreds of little things you have to execute on. You know, just a, just a simple fact for you to order a burger and a beer and have it come tasting good, hot, and a beer, you know, ice cold, there's hundreds of little things that have to happen that proceed that just for that simple task. So exactly what you said, you know, we have to make sure we're hiring the right people, we're, we're getting them trained, they're, you know, they're coming to work, uh, ordering the food, prepping the food at tap room. Um, you know, kind of what I think has really worked for us is, you know, we don't buy any uh, frozen food. So all of, our, all of our apps are made in house, you know, whether it's uh, mozzarella sticks or mac and cheese bowls or poppers or, you know, everything is, is made fresh. Um, so for us, it's a lot of prep. So you kind of hit the nail on the head. You know, we, we, we do have a lot of prep. Um, but, uh, you know, s same thing is, you know, on the beverage side of things, you know, uh, obviously we have a lot of kegs. So, you know, it's, it's that ordering of the beer and, uh, you know, trying to create a vibe and an atmosphere that people want to be at. So, uh, you know, on top of the food and beverage, um, you know, making sure that uh, TVs are on, you know, the, the, the right game is on and the, the temperature is right. So when you're sitting here, it doesn't matter how great or bad your food is. If you're thinking about how hot or how cold you are, true. that totally ruins your experience, right? Yeah. So is the, uh, the music on? Is it the right song? Is it the right volume? Um, and certain volumes, depending on the time of day, you know, we, we tweak the volumes like every hour. Sure. Uh, same thing with lighting, right? Like we really uh, get on our management team to every hour we have to bring the lighting down, you know, a little bit with the Gradually. sun. You know, so, so it's not too bright or not too dark. So, um, you know, there's like an exact science and there's all those little things behind the scenes going on to, to make you feel comfortable. Really. Yeah, there's a lot more than what you, in what you just said than I could have even sat and thought about. What percentage are you working on versus in your business? I am almost fully working on the business. Yep. Um, very little in the business, which is great. And I've kind of said as, as our businesses have grown, um, it's almost got a little bit easier only because I have the ability to now hire people smarter than me, yeah. right? So like uh, when it was, Same. right? When there was, when there was one or two locations, I had to wear every hat. I had, was in operations in the stores every single day. I had to do the marketing. I had to do the financing, accounting. Even at one stage I was doing the bookkeeping and you know, paying the bills. And then uh, as we've grown, now I have a full-time marketing guy who's 10 times better and smarter than me in marketing. I have you know, a director of operations, uh, and regional management who are just amazing operators, better operators than I am. So and like yep. in each department, are starting to uh, just hire people within their niche and what they like to do, which allows me to, to naturally gravitate to either what I like or what I'm better at. Sure. So. Taproom has multiple locations. Um, are there future plans for more? 
So we've been working with Stone for the last 18 months, and she's been incredible. She's helped a lot of restaurant brands go from infancy to massive national change that you've been to. Um, so we've been working with her, so we've kind of put it on paper that you know we want to grow out of market, scale. We kind of, our uh, number is 50 locations in 10 years, so that's kind of what, what's on the board right now that, that we're working towards. Talk to me a little bit about your staff. I, I think you were also alluding to some of that before, but you know, you, you're starting to put some really knowledgeable people in place, but you know, talk to me about the... the, the I, in any interview, I say it all the time, it's all about the people. Like, yep. It's not about us anymore, right? It's, it's um, you know, one thing that, uh, my, that my partners and I just really get a lot out of is creating opportunity and you know, knowing that we're building this company not just for us, but for the team and, and people around us. And I say it all the time, you know, we could have the best burger or we could have the coolest place or whatever, but if we don't have the, the right people, then, you know, it'll never work. Won't work. Um, you know, and on, a, on the flip side, uh, when you have good people around you, they can make up for any other type of shortcomings you, you may have or bumps in the road you may have. Who decides the menu and even the foods that you cook and when you decide to serve or what you're serving? Yep, so, uh, you know, my partner Dave, um, that's kind of his, his area and really uh, our kitchen manager at our Bayshore location, which we're at now, uh, Darwin, he's been with us since day one. He opened Patchogue with us and yeah, he's really been instrumental in, uh, you know, building different recipes and coming up with ideas and specials, getting, you know, feedback from the public that, hey, this special really worked. All right, let's get that on our next uh, menu rollout. So uh, really Darwin and Dave, I have to give the credit to. What would you say, James, your biggest challenge of today that you face as a business owner um, and, and running, running the business and trying to grow the business? Um, labor is probably the one. Um, yeah. It's not, you know, just to our industry, obviously, there's, there's uh, kind a of a, a labor shortfall everywhere. Um, but it seems like, uh, you know, especially back of the house cooks, um, it's kind of a dying breed or they're kind of going into other industries, so. What's uh, some, a bit of advice or something that you would tell somebody, either a, somebody looking to start a business or start in business or in your industry? I would say anyone looking to get into entrepreneurship, um, work on yourself uh, big time, um, personal development, right? It's like when I, ne when I am networking and around other successful entrepreneurs, uh, it's not a secret that they've read the same 100 books I've read. That is great, and I, and I, I can see a lot of people that maybe are, are really hyped about what they want to go do in the moment. They start it, they hit some turbulence, and then because they're not, they're not prepared for it. They, exactly. They really, they, There's they no the doubt every single quit. business is going to hit a speed bump, yeah, right? Yep, so if yep. you're not mentally strong enough to say to understand that that's just a speed bump and not a total roadblock, then you will absolutely fail. What's next for Taproom? I know we, you know, you mentioned we alluded to. to, to yeah, so we're, so we're so we're growing. We have uh, two locations, kind of. Uh, signed right now that should be opening within the um, next six to nine months uh, on Long Island and then um, you know trying to build kind of that real estate pipeline yep. uh, to um, to keep the growth going and really we're just more so than ever as we grow we I'm spending so much time and effort trying to make sure that you know our current stores are operating at you know the most optimal level things that I wasn't really paying attention to years ago um, is now every, every single little piece of the business we're analyzing, we're trying to improve all those little things. It's like, you know, they might be operating at 80 or 90 percent. We're just trying to turn the dial on, up on every single little thing so the experience for the guest is, you know, the absolute best it could be. I wanted to thank you for joining us today at the Tap Room Bar and Restaurant. We hope you had a great time and enjoyed this episode and we look forward to bringing you inside more interesting businesses like The Tap Room. So be sure to follow us and don't miss out. If you are interested in having owners and operators showcase your business, please comment below and we will be in touch. Thanks again, have a great day.